In the late 1980s, the world of railroading was just beginning to emerge from the darkness of the Penn Central era. East Coast railroads such as the Seaboard, Chessie, Conrail, and a very, very young Norfolk Southern were absolutely thriving in this new age of railroading. However, these big class ones had a slight issue. They were stuck using old and barely functioning veterans from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, with the newest locomotive being built in 1979 with GE's first wide cab design, the most handsome engine ever, the BQ-23-7. Before time began, there was the Cube. With the railroads desperately needing new motive power, they turned to Fairbanks Morse, Electro Motor Division, and General Electric and set up requirements to make a 6-axle 3,000-plus horsepower engine with new electronic systems. Fairbanks Morse was, uh... So they pretty much dropped out early on. EMD managed to roll the infamous SD50 design, which was... Yep, yeah, pretty much a dumpster fire right off the bat. GE's first design was the B32-8. However, their first 6-axle design was the C39-8. 161 were produced, with the majority going to NS, 22 going to Conrail, and then after the split, 10 went to CSX. However, the C39-8 was a fairly unpopular locomotive with train crews. Cited factors such as a rough ride, a tendency to overheat, frequent turbocharger issues, issues with the fuel injection system, and a long, long list of other reliability issues. GE quickly took the lessons learned from the C39 and saw them take the blueprints of the C30-7 and rip the locomotive pretty much right down to the frame, adding a new body, a new GE7 HDL engine, new electronics, an extended frame, and the most physical difference, added a newly designed standard cab with new extended radiators. This new locomotive, the GE C40-8, was introduced to the world as GE No. 1, and after testing, would enter production between 1987 to 1992. A total of 585 would be produced, with 25 going to Conrail, 89 going to Norfolk Southern, and 157 ordered from the newly formed CSX. These locomotives were rostered at CSX T7500-7646, and then after the Conrail split, CSX added another 10 to the roster, with CSX 7489 to CSX 7498 being the ex Conrail engines. The C40-8s could be seen on all kinds of trains on CSX's rails, with a lot of rail fans quite nostalgic for these old underdogs. The C40s had mostly uneventful careers on CSX, besides a tragic and unfortunate accident that occurred on March 28, 2000 at Tenga, Georgia, with CSX 7580 hitting a school bus. And then another tragic accident at Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, with CSX 7622 hitting another school bus. Other than these severe incidents and some minor derailments, the CSX C40 8s led hardy, colorful careers, pulling trains up and down the East Coast. However, as the future consumed the past, there was a pretty interesting and unique story for these old workhorses in store. In 2016, the C40-8s were reaching the end of their operational lives on CSX, and with the advent of E. Hunter Harrison's precision scheduled railroading, Fruit. <coughs> and what does that make? Ketchup. <coughs> the Milwaukee oh, Road. Brother, this guy stinks. And new technology such as PTC or positive train control, these old and weary ponies were slowly liquidated from CSX's roster with all C40-8s being off the roster completely by 2017. While half were sold off as leasing units or as motive power for short lines, the other half was not so lucky. 
being mercilessly scrapped alongside the AC-6000s and ex-Conrail SD-60s. One of the receivers of CSX's C40-8s was Pan Am Rail, which operated the majority of running C40-8s of any short line, until in 2022, when CSX acquired Pan Am Railways and its motive power. Pan Am 7627, formerly CSX 7627, was rolled out of the Huntington locomotive shops with a brand new YN3C paint scheme. PTC, as well as new electronics, and was renumbered to CSX 9280. As for the other C40-8s, well, they still operate on former Pan Am trackage, with the rest being owned by Maine Central and Berkshire and Eastern Railroads. CSX 9280, like a phoenix, rose from the ashes of PSR and is now the sole standard cab-8 survivor rolling down the main line. While this unit remains active, the CM44AH and SD70AC rebuilds are slowly putting the Dash 8s and 9s back into service. So this very well be the last breath of the standard cab Dash 8s on CSX. The CSX C40-8s are powered by a turbocharged GE 4000 horsepower, 4-cycle 16-cylinder 16 FBL engine with a 9 by 10 halves born stroke cycle, dynamic braking, and multiple unit capability. Minimum RPM is 450 and the maximum is 1050. These units have a GY27 main alternator, 6 GE752 DC traction motors, and 2 mechanical driven traction motor blowers between the locomotive frame and the 6 axle high adhesion CC style trucks. They have Model 26L Westinghouse air brakes and a Model 3C DC Westinghouse air compressor. The CSX C40-8s have a starting tractive effort of 106,790 pounds of force and 92,750 pounds of continuous tractive effort. With a wheel diameter of 40 inches, a turning radius of 21 degrees, and a gearing ratio of 83 to 20, this allows these old engines to reach a max speed of 70 miles an hour. Dimensions of the C40-8s are 70 feet 8 inches long, 15 feet 4 inches tall, and 10 feet 3 inches wide. The CSX C40-8s were initially delivered with the Nathan Airchime K5H, with later units being delivered with the K5LA. Here are some examples. The C stands for the CC wheel arrangement, 40 for the 4,000 horsepower, and Dash 8 for the locomotive being designed in the 80s. The C40 Dash 8s have been painted up in almost every CSX paint scheme, being initially delivered into the CSX's stealth paint scheme, and then the YN1, YN2, YN3, YN3 boxcar, and now, with 9280, the YN3C. The CSX C40-8s have led a long and colorful life on CSX, and although the march of progress and the scourge of PSR destroyed the fleet, CSX 9280, like a phoenix, carries on the legacy of one of CSX's most beloved locomotives. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Comment down below what locomotive you guys want to see next, and special thanks to Thunderbolt 1000 Productions for the opportunity to collab. Until next time, see y'all out there on the high iron.